Hi, I'm Rob Cousin. Welcome to my shop. Our newsletter topic this month is what are the top 10 hand planes? And this is going to be my opinion. And if you notice behind me, there's a lot more, but I chose the top 10. Now, these are the ones that I use. And this is when you're doing a combination of both hand tools and power tools. So you have to adjust accordingly. I'm going to start uh, with top priority on my left and work my way over to the right. And this is based on ones that I use the most. My first is my five and a half. This is the plane that I would consider the go-to. It gets 85% of my total plane use. This is what's being used. It's long enough to be really good in a shooting board. And just in case you don't understand that concept, shooting board is a device that is designed to hold the workpiece and the tool at right angles so that when you're building something, you can automatically square things up without having to balance the plane, board and the vise and balance the plane on top of it. Shooting board does that for you. What you want in a shooting board is some mass because you're not, gravity isn't helping as you plane through the end grain of a piece of stock. You want mass. You also want length from here to the blade because you can't start planing out here. You have to be engaged. Otherwise, you'd slam into the side. So the more distance you have here, the greater run you get at it before you, the blade actually engages the wood. Of course, the bigger plane would be better, but then I like to have a plane that I can use in the shooting board, and I can use it on my bench as well, meaning not too big and cumbersome. So that gets top marks. That's the Wood River 5.5. Lee Nelson also makes a 5.5 that I would be just as happy with. Next plane is going to be my low angle block plane. Now, why a low angle and why a block plane? First of all, if you're going, if you're building furniture, there's oftentimes you're going to come in and you're going to want to chamfer a corner. Just knock that off. Too big of a plane. You want something one-handed and you want the low angle. Now, unlike the standard bench plane where the bevel is on the bottom side, on a block plane, the bevel is actually on the top side. So when you're factoring in your angle of attack, you take the bedding angle, which in this case is 12 degrees. You add to that the primary bevel on the blade, which is another 25 degrees for a total of 37. And then you typically are going to have some micro bevels as you plane or hone the front part of the blade. So you could be planing it anywhere from 40 to 44 degrees. However, the real reason that I like the low angle block is because the height of the lever cap right here is lower than it is on the standard block plane, which would be up about that high. So it nestles in your palm much more comfortably and you're behind the blade instead of sitting on top of it. If you want to change the geometry of the cut, something that you would have a standard block plane for, you can simply take another blade and put a steeper primary bevel on it and then give you all the advantages that you would have with the standard block plane. But you have the comfort. Third plane would be my shoulder plane. Now this is a three quarter. This is a Wood River creation patterned after an old Preston. Why a three quarter? Well, typically you're using this to address the shoulder on a uh, tenon as it goes into the mortise, you want it nice and neat. And in trimming that shoulder on three quarter stock, you've got to be able to, you, have, you need about the capacity of a quarter of an inch because typically if you're cutting a tenon on a piece of three quarter stock, you're going to have one third shoulder, one third tenon, one third shoulder. If you're using inch and a half material, you're going to have a half inch shoulder, half inch tenon, half inch shoulder. So the three quarter will cover all the bases for you unless you get into really large work. What do I like about this? I like the fact that the lever cap is low and it's also hollowed out on the bottom side. So when you, and this tends to be a difficult plane to control, but I can tuck my three fingers in there and squeeze right here. And now I have lots of lateral control on it. I put my thumb right there as I start the cut. I use my index finger to press the side of the plane against, in this case, it would be the uh, tenon so that you make sure you're using the square setup of the plane to make sure that that shoulder you're cutting is square to the tenon. I just find this a very comfortable plane to use. The blade is a little bit wider always, and it's intentional, than the body of the plane, so that if you're going to be cutting on this side, you simply press your plane down on a hard surface like that, and it'll flush the blade up on that side, and if you're doing the other side, you would just do the exact opposite. So three quarter inch shoulder plane, will cover most of the bases that you're going to ever need a shoulder plane for. Fourth plane is my number seven jointer. And the reason why a number seven or a number eight is the length of the sole. When you're flattening a bench top, which would be a great example, you need a large, long plane that will reference off the, all the high spots 
and help you bring it down to one level. Now this is a smoother. The smoother would simply ride in between the highs and the lows like this, leaving the surface smooth, but not necessarily flat. The jointer won't do that on its own, but it is much easier to get a surface flat with a long bedded jointer than it is with a short smoother. Now I do like the number seven because all of the parts from the front knob to the blade chip breaker, lever cap, frog, rear tote, all these parts are interchangeable with the five and a half. And as we go down the line a little bit, you'll see I have a four and a half in here. And again, all of these parts, all interchangeable. Why is that important? It's not like you're gonna be switching the knob out on one or the other. But if you wanna make say a high angle blade where you increase the angle of attack by putting a 20 degree back bevel on your blade, that same blade could then be used in all of those planes. So that's, that's if you needed a reason, that's a good one. So number seven or number eight jointer would be my number four. Number five is going to be Lee Nelson's skew block plane. And what I like about this, it has a removable side plate. Let's see if I can find it. I never have it on there. Oh yeah, there it is. A removable side plate. Let's see if I can dig this out. I, I never use this for a block plane. That's why I never use this. But that side plate sits in there. And when you remove it, it exposes the blade. Now you can work right up to a vertical surface. The blade is skewed. So I use this when I'm cutting dovetails to cut a little rabbit on the end of the tailboard, which helps to register it against the pin board. You're cutting across the grain. So that skew angle on the blade is going to give you your best and smoothest surface cutting across the grain. It also works nicely in that it pulls the plane this way, which keeps the fence tight against the end of the board. It has an adjustable fence, which is something Lee Nelson added. It wasn't on the original Stanley. The wooden portion I've added. We actually now offer these for sale. If somebody wants something to add to their skew block plane. But this is a great plane. I would consider it to be an essential. So it's number five on my list. Number six is also a Lee Nelson product. This is called a... Uh, router plane. This is the small one. They make a large one or a full size one. And I would certainly have that on my list at some point. It wouldn't be in the top 10, but there's the large one. There's the small one. You can do the small. It, this is just a lot easier. I'll, I'll show you the one point that I like. You, your support is on the sole of the, uh, of the plane. You see how close the blade is to the support of the sole of the plane compared to this one where now I've got that a piece of wood on there, but you're quite, quite a ways away. And when you're using this to say, adjust the thickness of a tenon, as you push that, you're registering on, I don't have a tenon to show you, but you're registering one half of the plane on the face of the board. And then you're going along and you're trying to clean up or take that thickness of that tenon down ever so slightly. The cutter is wanting to pull the tool this way. So the closer you are, the more support you have. I just like this one. So that's the small shoulder plane, uh, pardon me, the small router plane. Number seven is going to be my scrub plane. And uh, this is actually a, a pinnacle made by Woodcraft, no longer available, but very similar to the Stanley number 40 and a half, which is also made by Lee Nelson. This is for uh, primarily for addressing rough stock and getting it to a point where you can then use your bench planes, kind of like an ax with a little more control. Big thick blade, large rear handle so you can get full four fingers on there and there's times when I use it just like that. Um, big open throat so that you can take a lot of stock and you can really move a ton of material with this. Great exercise by the way. Number eight is going to be my smoother. And I used to have this much closer to the front of the pack but because my five and a half does such a great job on the shooting board and is a really good smoother, it's taken the place of this. So if you've seen older videos that I produced, you would have heard me talking a lot more about this than I do now. Um, still, I think you should have a smoother in your arsenal. The nice thing about it is you can go in and flatten off the top of a piece of furniture that you may not n worry about it being perfectly flat, but you want it to be nice and smooth. And this will do it and do a lovely job. And again, all the parts are interchangeable with the number seven and the five and a half. Now, another Lee Nelson product, this is the squirrel tail. And I really like this because unlike a block plane, it's even easier to hold in your hand, not that, not that the block plane isn't, but this little squirrel's tail actually sits up in there. Your finger sits in that little depression on the side and you hold the plane like that. And it has, uh, it's 
yeah, I consider that to be uh, oh, a, a real essential. It fits in your apron, pocket. It's extremely comfortable and easy to use. The only difficulty is sharpening it. The blade is small. It sits in there at a very low angle, so you have to be careful. Actually, I'm, that's not true because the blade is on the top side. But it is a difficult blade to sharpen just because of the sheer size of it. And it's also difficult to set. You don't have a lot of control. So it's one of those ones where once you get it set, you just tend to leave it. So I don't change the depth of cut on this. I set it at one setting. Now that brings us up to number 10. And I actually have two planes here. I'm going to tell you about both of them. They're both Lee Nielsen products. And they're both ha they have, both have rabbiting capabilities, meaning the blade comes right to the side. This is a scraper. This is patterned after the Stanley number 85. And this is, actually I'll talk about that separately because it deserves lots of attention. I think you have to have a scraper in your arsenal. There's going to be some woods, particularly exotic woods, that just do not re respond to a plain blade, a cutting edge, and they'll scrape extremely well. Um, there's two that I would actually choose from, and I'll tell you why I chose that one. This is the number 112, which is a much larger um, scraper in terms of the width of cut. However, this allows you to get right into a vertical surface. So if you're scraping and you've got to get into a vertical surface, your only choice is this one. This is going to be unusable. You've got a narrower cut, but you can still, everything this can do, you can do with this, but there's operations you can do with this that you cannot do with the number 112. Also has tilting handles, so if you're right in a ver in, into a vertical surface, you can simply loosen those handles, tip them over to the side, same thing on the front knob, and this will just save your knuckles from getting busted up. And that'll allow you to work right in. Very convenient, really cool plane. A little bit of a difficult plane to set up. Your depth adjustment, I typically just put a very thin shim on the front, raising the front of the plane, push the blade down, lock it in place, takes a little bit of work, take, just like it takes a knack to being able to sharpen them and get it to work properly, but once it does, it's invaluable. All right, that brings me to my last one, which is the 10 and a quarter. So this was referred to as a carriage maker's plane or a bench rabbit plane. It was a Stanley number 10 and a quarter. Uh, this is the Lee Nielsen version. As you can see, it has rabbiting capability, blades full width. It also has, um, it has, uh, Oh, I'm trying to think of what they're called, knickers on the side. You can lower these down so if you need to and you're cutting across the grain, you can go in there, drop that knicker down so it'll score the wood before the blade engages it, leaving you a nice clean cut. Otherwise, you'd get a torn edge where this is passing th across the boards. You have one on both sides. It too has tilting handles, so you can loosen these up just like the 85, and you can tilt them to the right or to the left, again, to save your knuckles. The only, it's, uh, the only thing I find difficult with this plane, and as long as I've had it, is getting that blade in and out. It can be a bit of a pain. In fact, of course, on camera, it makes it even more difficult. But you'll find in playing around with it that it's not the easiest thing to do. But once you get it in there, you leave it. I sometimes have to take the chip breaker off and assemble it when it's in place. So that, that is a close number 11. And you can continue to build from there. If you want to, if I was to go a little bit further, I would certainly include the large router plane, the large scraper. Uh, here's another rabbiting plane. This is a rabbiting block plane. Not nearly as usable as the skew block plane, nor is it as valuable to me as my 10 and a quarter with a bench rabbiting plane, but it does have a role to play in tight situations. And I've got other shoulder planes here. I've got a half inch, a five eighths, and a, and a one inch. They don't get near the amount of use that that one does. I also like the fact that this has some heft to it. So it's endless. If you've ever seen an old Stanley catalog from 100 years ago, it was about that thick. For every router bit you have today, there was a plane. And there was a lot of other planes in there. I'll show you just a few that are really unusual. Um, where is my chamfer plane? This one right here. No, we've got it apart, but this plane was specifically designed to go in and cut a chamfer so you could simply adjust adjust the depth of your chamfer by moving that front plate. We're, we're missing a knob on here, and that would go in and 
and very accurately cut a chamfer and then you'd have the exact same setting all the way around. This is a, uh, a really interesting plane as well. This was a tongue and groove plane. So uh, on one setting, you would cut your groove. Pardon me, this would, let me put my glasses on and make sure I'm telling you this right. This would cut your tongue and then you would simply rotate that fence and now that would cut your groove. And it was a it was a really interesting plane. I've used it. It's a lot of fun. Of course, there's faster ways of doing it, but no dust, no danger, no noise. That's a great one. And the list goes on and on. As you start uh, scrounging garage sales and checking out auctions online, you'll find all kinds of planes that Stanley once made. Like I said, the catalog used to be a couple of inches thick. Get the top ten. It'll probably satisfy you. And every plane here will does a specific function that another plane does not do. You can't do with the number eight and number seven that what you can do with the five, four and a half, and the reverse is true. So they all have their separate function and retail therapy, just keep buying them, they'll feel better. Anyway, hope this helps. Enjoy your woodworking.